This innocent girl is Wu Youngwu, she is five years old but still isn't able to speak. Mr. Guang Ho took his daughter everywhere for treatment but there was still no progress. Until one day the doctor diagnosed her with autism, which surprised him. While returning home, her father accidentally quarreled with a neighbor. Seeing the homeowner beating her father, the little girl was scared and patted her own head. At this time, an unexpected miracle happened. The first time Young Wu opened her mouth to speak was a series of articles in Korean law. Moreover, she spoke very fluently, seeing that his daughter was able to talk. Mr. Guang Ho was extremely happy and ignored the argument with his neighbor. After returning home, he asked Young Wu where she learned that. He glanced over the law books beside him. The little girl danced and answered with criminal law. She remembers everything without missing a word. The neighbor came over to apologize for her husband's behavior earlier. As for Young Wu's father, tears of happiness spread down his cheeks. It turns out my daughter is a genius with autism. Just like that, ten years passed by, the sunlight shimmered through the window, and a new day began again. Young Wu has grown up and become the first autistic lawyer in Korea. Every day she chooses a suitable expression from her father's photos hanging on the wall. Every day her meals are made by her father who raises his daughter alone. Young Wu likes to eat seaweed rice rolls because she thinks she can see through the food ingredients in it. Today is also the first day Young Wu goes to work at a famous law firm in the area where she lives. Her father was still very worried and told her many things before letting her go. Don't repeat others' as words, don't talk nonsense and don't talk too frankly. Most importantly, don't talk about whales to others. Young Wu has something very different from other people, in her world. There is always a whale that is like a guardian god who grows with her. And gives her more motivation and courage to survive with this disease. Despite her good law knowledge, Young Wu gets trouble on her first day at work. Walking to the company door, it is a revolving door. Young Wu tries her best to pass through several times but fails. But God does not disappoint good people. Later, a tall handsome guy comes over and helps her. He helps her resolve this confusion. It is even better when this guy works in the same law office as her. His name is Jun Ho, seeing Wu Young Wu like that but he doesn't discriminate. On the contrary, he enthusiastically leads Young Wu to the lawyer's office. After opening the door, Young Wu counts five seconds before entering. Lawyer Young then looked through Young Wu's profile. To his surprise, there is a note from Director Han asking him for taking care of her. Before he could open his mouth, Young Wu says she has autism spectrum disorder. Just like that, Young Wu continued to say countless strange words. Puppies, chickens, barnyard animals. Yu Young Wu reads the same forward or backward. But these meaningless words made everyone in the office burst into laughter. Lawyer Young immediately goes to Director Han and questions her. Why hire an autistic lawyer? Director Han says that Young Wu graduated as valedictorian from Seoul National Law University, and also achieved full score on the law certification exam. How would Han Bara miss such a talent? Lawyer Young still feels that something was wrong and then continues. Her achievement was due to her outstanding memory ability. A real lawyer needs to have knowledge, experience, and good speaking skills along with good social communication skills. He can't instruct someone who can't introduce themselves. Director Han says today is her first day at work. Then asks him why he knew she couldn't do it. Under Director Han's determination, the lawyer Young could only compromise. He is having a lawsuit that would be used as Young Wu's entrance test. What Young Wu doesn't expect is that her first case, when she becomes a lawyer, is of her old landlady. The landlady lovingly hugs Young Wu, but because of ASD, she is very afraid of other people touching her body. Ten years have passed, and the man's dementia has become more and more serious. One day, a shipper came to the house. The husband suspected that she had feelings for him. After that, he angrily scolded her saying she was no different from a prostitute. Despite her age, she had enough. She was angry and took an iron and hit her husband on the head. The two had a fight, the husband fell down and fainted. Now she is accused of unsuccessfully attempting to harm someone. The best solution that lawyer Young offers is to ask for a suspended sentence. But Young Wu's conclusion is to plead innocent. According to lawyer Young, this is completely impossible and truly reckless. He couldn't help but begin to doubt Young Wu's abilities. However, she does not panic but was inspired by whales and finds the exact clue recorded in civil law. This matter does not need to be considered whether it is a crime or not. The focus of this lawsuit should be on criminal law, not civil law. Simply, even if the old man dies, the old lady will not be entitled to any property. Therefore, this crime does not constitute the crime of intentional murder. The most serious is only charged with injuring others, Young Wu is confident she can do it. After listening, Lawyer Young also finds it reasonable and nods. He also apologizes for hastily judging Young Wu based on her appearance and her autism. Concerning for Young Wu having difficulty communicating with customers. So Lawyer Young specially arranges for Jun Ho to go with her. Seeing Young Wu struggling to get through this door. Jun Ho tells her to just go as the pace and she would be able to pass. 
With the help of the handsome guy, Young Wu smoothly passes through the revolving door. As soon as she arrives at the hospital, the landlord madly scolds Young Wu. Even though the landlord's behavior makes others uncomfortable, and is very difficult to live with, the landlady still takes good care of him. Is it the power of love that people often talk about? They are both old, so to increase the chance of winning the case. She decides to find a way to get the jury involved and lets them see her pitiful situation. Thus, it is possible to gain sympathy from the jury. Relying on Young Wu's communication ability, it is difficult to impress the jury. So they all want to fight for the right to defend in court, but Young Wu does not want to give up. She says the key point is for everyone to see the defendant's pitiful scene, right? There's nothing more pitiful than a disabled look and she has ASD. Young Wu's words completely moves lawyer Young. He encourages her to prepare well to overcome the language barrier. Young Wu goes to her only friend, Zhu Amy, and simulates the scene with her. The trial date finally arrives. Young Wu welcomes her first trial, but after the trial begins, because she was so tense, Young Wu couldn't hear the judge's question. This is the first time a lawyer dares to ignore the judge's words. Lawyer Young next to her is also worried about this new colleague. But Young Wu sits motionless, the whole scene falls into embarrassment. Lawyer Young could only grit his teeth and cope. This makes the landlady feel disappointed. After the prosecutor recounts the incident, Young Wu still sits quietly on the chair, rubbing her hands nervously. The judge asks if she does not want to say anything. This makes both Mr. Guang Ho and Zhu Amy sitting in the stands worry. Young Wu finally musters up the courage to stand up. Young Wu directly admits that she has ASD. It's difficult for someone who stammers and doesn't act properly like her, but she loves the law. As a lawyer, she will restore the innocence of the defendant. A speech full of sincerity and emotion earns the judge's approval. The trial begins, the prosecutor attacks with sharp words, causing difficulties for the landlady. Young Wu immediately expresses anger and lost control, a skill she have learned for a long time. Launch a strong counterattack, but to maintain innocence, the most important person is still the landlord. As long as he is brought to court, he will declare his wife's innocence. Even if his illness recurrenced, the jury would understand what the landlady had gone through. As expected, he once again causes chaos in the trial and is taken out of the scene. Just as Young Wu made her final declaration of innocence, the incident happened. The homeowner passed away on the way to the hospital. The prosecutor changes the charges to the landlady. This sudden bad news catches Young Wu off guard. Then she attends the funeral ceremony. Here, Young Wu deeply blames herself. In order to make a perfect sentence, she invited the landlord to court. That's why he passed away, but the landlady doesn't blame her. While Young Wu is stuck in the lawsuit, she discovers that Jun Ho also likes whales. The appearance of whales brings inspiration to Young Wu. She finds the key point to break the deadlock. Before the homeowner was injured by the iron, he had a headache. Furthermore, it is also clearly stated in the police report. The homeowner was hit in the head with an iron but did not have any injuries. That means his brain hemorrhage was most likely not caused by the iron. Furthermore, in police records, it was shown that he often had headaches. It is a warning sign of brain hemorrhage due to dementia. The expert doctor also make a statement. The first trial in Young Wu's life has ended successfully. She successfully clears the landlady of all charges. In the wedding hall, sparkling with splendor and brilliance. The bride and groom step by step walk into the hall. The bride accidentally trips on her dress. The dress keeps falling down. At this moment, the entire hall's atmosphere seems to freeze. The guest's eyes turn to the stage. This boy opened his mouth widely, as if he sees something terrible. Nothing is more embarrassing than this for both families when the bride exposes herself right at her wedding. Seeing the tattoo on the bride's back, the groom's grandfather was so angry that he fainted. Just like that, a splendid wedding turned into a joke for everyone to talk about. Then the bride's father, Chairman Kim, goes to Hanbara Law Office. It cost me 230 million to organize this wedding, yet I had to be humiliated in front of thousands of guests. He wants the hotel to compensate for this accident. The hotel side says to refund the cost of organizing the wedding and compensate the hotel's promotional 10 million package. Lawyer Young says that the hotel plan proposed is very reasonable. But Chairman Kim isn't satisfied, he asks the hotel pay at least 1 billion in compensation. Hearing the number 1 billion, Director Han is a bit surprised. Because if it is approved, the number will not be that high. Then Chairman Kim brings Taysan Law Firm to compare. In the end Hanbara is no different from Taysan. He comes here because he thought Hanbara could do it, but unexpectedly they are both useless. Taysan Law Firm has always been their opponent. Director Han decides to take on this case to prove that her office is in a different position. The lawsuit was transferred to Young Wu's group, but when they analyzed all the possibilities, including all the parts to claim compensation, it is impossible to reach 1 billion. They have to find more clues so they decide to split into two teams. Young Wu and lawyer Min Wu go to bride Kim Wayang's house. 
Because of that incident, the wedding was postponed. Wa Young remembers on the fitting day, the dress still fits well, but on the wedding day it feels looser. The staff said it was probably because she was thinner. Young Wu discovers that Wa Young's room is full of pictures of herself, and her wedding photo is thrown in a corner. Furthermore, she does not wear a wedding ring on her hand. Inquiring the groom, she learns that this wedding was arranged by both families. He and Wa Young don't have any feelings at all, and since she reveals the Buddha tattoo on her back, his grandfather insists on annulling the marriage. Because he is a Christian so he feels betrayed. After leaving, Min Wu couldn't help but start to grumble. The bride and groom get married in such a hurry. If they want to, they must at least be grown up. Surely since birth, they have not known how to cook a meal. Young Wu suddenly relates to herself, so she calls Jun Ho to ask. He also believes that adults must cook their own meals and live independently away from their parents. If we consider human standards, all killer whales cling to their mothers. It wasn't until hearing Su Yun's voice on the other end of the line that Young Wu stopped. Su Yun and Jun Ho are going to the hotel to investigate clues. On the road, Su Yun suddenly has a stomach ache. Going into the bathroom, she was still one step late. Now it's really not okay. After all, she asks Young Wu to bring her another pair of pants. Young Wu went to the lobby and met Jun Ho. I came to find lawyer Choi, I can't say why I came here. Especially, I can't tell you. Because Su Yun said she can choose any pants. So Young Wu chose for her a pair of floral pajama pants with good material. After changing her pants, her stomach still hurts severely, so Su Yun has to give up. She has to let Young Wu pretend to be a couple with her crush. After that, Jun Ho and Young Wu pretended to be a couple to order wedding dresses. The reason we rush to get married is we go over the line. Do you understand? Being exposed, Jun Ho quickly covered for Young Wu when choosing a wedding dress. Deliberately chose the dress that fell down. At the same time, the hotel staff talks on the phone in the bathroom. She mentioned that the colleague involved in that incident had been fired. Accidentally, Su Yun overhears this story. Jun Ho approached that employee, intending to get the fired person's contact information, but unsuccessfully. When he saw Young Wu wearing a wedding dress, it seemed like she transformed into a princess in a fairy tale. He looks at her deeply and is completely immersed in that beauty. Young Wu smiles brightly and asks what's wrong with him. At this moment, she is no different from an angel radiating a bright halo. Those auras disappears and she returns to be an innocent girl always mentoning whale. Fresh cream contains about 30% fat content, whale milk is much denser than cream, because its milk contains about 30-50% to fat content. So how much will a baby whale that still drinks breast milk weigh after 6 months? Young Wu's enthusiasm for whales makes Jun Ho feel uneasy eating, so he makes a deal that she can only talk about whales during lunch break. But when we have to talk about whales, we can talk about it. Only then is Young Wu happy again, and at this moment they see the hotel staff again. The two come to meet her and reveal their identities. After knowing Wa Young has to receive psychological treatment and almost has her marriage annulled. Finally, the waiter mustered up the courage to go to court to testify. One day before the wedding, the ordered wedding dress was unfortunately torn. Because the deadline was tight, the hotel manager replaced it with a similar dress. But it was accidentally too loose so the new dress easily is tripped on. They then fire the employee involved in this. When everyone think they win for sure, the opposing lawyer suddenly gives arguments. They investigate and find that after this incident, the bride posted her statement online. The content is that the groom's family is considering cancelling the marriage, which is fortunate. If she waits a little longer, she won't have to live with a man she doesn't know. This proves that the wedding dress incident did not affect her psychology at all. Therefore, the hotel does not need to compensate her for mental damages anymore. This is truly hitting a dead end. Young Wu's group immediately holds an emergency meeting. Wa Young also speaks out what was in her heart at this time. Her marriage is a transaction for her father. Once married, the groom's family will use an expensive piece of land as the wedding presents. And her father has long wanted that piece of land, and even has a plan for how to use it. At this moment, Young Wu hears a whale call that brings a new thought to her. Before the wedding, the groom's family pledged to give the bride a plot of land. If the dress wasn't pulled down, the groom's grandfather wouldn't have seen the Buddha tattoo on Wa Young's back. They won't be disappointed and will give you the promised land. But due to the hotel's fault, the bride didn't receive wedding gifts, so it is considered damage to claim compensation. For this reason, though they are not compensated 33 billion according to the value of the land, claiming 3 billion 3 is so easy. Unexpectedly, Wa Young asked her dad to stop. She doesn't want to, but Chairman Kim only cares about money, not his daughter's thoughts. During the trial everything goes smoothly. But when announcing the final result, Wa Young decides that she wants to withdraw the lawsuit. Both sides agree, the judge decides to end the trial. Chairman Kim was angry and scolded his daughter, but Wa Young said it was her marriage. In her life, she doesn't want to marry someone she doesn't love. If she has to get married, she hopes to marry the person she loves. The two have been together for 10 years now. 
Chairman Kim looks at what before his eyes and almost has a heart attack. To celebrate the victory of Young Wu's lawsuit. The boss invites everyone to a dinner together. When everyone cheers, Jun Ho gently raises his cup to her, expressing his joy to her. When the party ends, Jun Ho is still waiting outside for her to ask if she needs him to take her home. Young Wu basically doesn't understand what he wanted to say because there are no love cells on her body. And Jun Ho is now attracted by this lovely girl. When the couple president of a pharmaceutical company come home, they discover their autistic son is pressing on their eldest child and is constantly hitting him in the chest. By the time they push him out, the eldest son is already dead. Meanwhile, the autistic son stands screaming in a corner. The cause of the brother's death was due to damage on his chest. Only the ribs alone has 22 broken places, causing bleeding inside the chest cavity and causing death. There are also light marks on the victim's neck but they are not fatal. The autopsy say that all the injuries on the boy's body were caused by his autistic younger brother. However, the strange thing is that the alcohol concentration in his blood was extremely high. That's equal to drink at least two bottles of strong wine. The procuracy has sued the younger brother for assaulting other to death. Because he has autism, lawyer Young decides to choose Young Wu, a person with the same illness as him, to assist, hoping she could communicate more effectively. When they see Young Wu introduce herself, both President and his wife feel very familiar. Lawyer Young explains that Young Wu has the same autism spectrum disorder as their younger son. The defendant's mother said the two brothers are very close, the older brother always takes care of the younger brother. The younger also listens to him very much. Although the younger brother was born with autism, his older brother was a good child who could not be faulted. The boy not only passes the entrance exam to Seoul University with a perfect score, but also has humility and warmth. No one asks, but the mother flexes too much. To gain more clues, lawyer Young suggests that Young Woo try talking to the younger brother. It's hard to believe that a person with a huge body like this has the IQ of a 10-year-old child. Young Woo quickly finds things in common with him. Not only do they like to repeat others' words, but their fingers can't keep still either. No matter how much Lawyer Young tries to communicate with the younger brother, he fails. He feels helpless so he asks Young Wu to try, but unexpectedly she asks him what happened that day. Why did you beat your brother? Perhaps Young Wu is too hasty, leading to the younger brother's emotions being agitated. He keeps hitting his head. Therefore, everyone could not ask any more questions and stop. After returning home, Young Wu asks her father how to communicate with an autistic person. This statement makes him very sympathetic, because he also had a lot of headaches of this before. When Young Wu was young, she couldn't speak but cry. Her father just mentioned the law, she immediately quieted down and listened. Just use her hobby to comfort her and she will calm down again. Using her father's words, she notices that the younger brother seems to really like rapping. Just communicate with him by singing and rapping and they can talk normally. The younger brother finally responds, proving that this method works. Young Wu takes the opportunity to ask him what happened, but as before he immediately loses control. Constantly hitting himself in the head and screaming don't do it, you would die. At this moment, the whale gives her a hunch. Combined with the information in the autopsy report, there is a possibility that the older brother wanted to end his life and the younger brother also confirmed her thoughts. But the mother says that could not be possible. Every time he loses control of his emotions, no matter what he is asked, he always answers the same way. To look for clues, Young Wu and Jun Ho went to the crime scene, then began searching the entire room. But unexpectedly, in such a serious situation, it seemed like they are dancing in the morning light. In the end, they find not only the broken rope but also the older brother's diary. The diary's contents proves that the older brother had tried to take his own life several times. But every time his younger brother saw it and ran to save him. In the eyes of his parents, he is an excellent person, so he can only constantly strive to not disappoint his parents. But that unintentionally created pressure on him. The boy's parents decide to hide the truth so that their younger son would bear all the blame. They don't want people to talk about their talented son. As the center of attention because of pressure was trying to suicide. Young Wu disagrees, she thinks that telling the truth to vindicate the second son is the best solution. Those words makes the father so angry that he scolds her severely. You're no good, you're just an autistic child. The case is getting hotter on social networks. Countless internet users do not know the truth and turn into keyboard warriors. They openly disparage autistic people. There are some who call for the abolition of the clause mitigating sentence for autistic people. All the insults and cursing are directed towards the younger brother. Unexpectedly, the next day he takes the car to the lawyer's office by himself. He recognizes Young Wu as his penguin friend. Young Wu says the reason for the crime was because he was in a state of emotional breakdown, uncontrollable due to weak nerves. That condition is caused by the symptoms of congenital autism. The judge turns the point to her, saying. She was also autistic, but had no such symptoms. So using the excuse of mental weakness to ask for a reduced crime is unreasonable. That puts unprecedented invisible pressure on Young Wu. 
Returning to the office, Juno discovers that she was planning to suicide. He panics and quickly pulls out the rope, causing the two of them to fall down. This is the first time they have such intimate contact. Juno is engrossed in looking at the girl in front of him. Even forgetting his hands are still placed on her butt. It turns out, Young Wu is just trying to simulate the crime scene. At this moment, the whale rises up to the surface again, giving her a hunch. Combined with Juno's previous action to save people, she speculates that the broken bone in the chest in the autopsy report was most likely caused when the younger tried to give first aid to his brother. For the broken bones in the back, the victim fell down when his brother came to save him. Although it can't remove the crime, it can erase the suspicion of assaulting the victim leading to death. At that time, the father's conscience also awakens. Even if I feel ashamed, I must clear my son's unjust sentence. At this time, Young Wu says she is no longer suitable to defense for this case. When I am with Juno, other people think he is a care worker for people with disabilities. Or when the driver held the defendant back, it was clear that I had money on me, but he thought I didn't have the ability to handle that either. Although she understands that her autism is different from other people, the judge do not know that. Which means all the other judges are the same. She says she is not a lawyer who could help the defendant. Although Young Wu does not act as a defense lawyer until the end, her arguments are very accurate. That much has cleared the guilt of that autistic brother. However, because she suffers great criticism after this case, she also submits her resignation. The first case after being official laywer also becomes her last. After quitting her job, she works as a waitress, carrying and pouring drinks for her father's restaurant. Best friend, Juaremi, goes to Young Wu for help. Her father was deceived by her eldest and second uncle. Since her grandfather passed away, 50 acres of land in the countryside has always been in her father's name. But recently that area is designated as an exploiting area, the government will compensate 10 billion won. If the money is divided equally among three families, it's enough for them to live comfortably. Yet her uncles said that according to inheritance law, the eldest gets half of the property, the second child gets three parts and the youngest gets two parts. Her father lived all his life in the countryside so he did not know about the law. Moreover, he thought that his siblings would not deceive him, so he carelessly sealed it. Only later did he find out that the contract the eldest uncle asked him to sign had a clause stating that all tax expenses were paid by him. All tax expenses totals exactly 2.3 billion won. Even if they receive 2 billion in compensation, they still have to make up an additional 300 million. Young Wu helps their family check the signed contract. It's obvious that the elder had prepared very carefully in advance so the content inside had no loopholes. The only way out is that he lied about the terms of the inheritance law. Legally, that behavior is considered fraud. Contracts signed in cases of fraud or coercion can be annulled. Because she quits her job, she asks Jo Amy to find lawyer Young. He says that contract in cases like this is fully signed and sealed, they don't have the ability to win. No one will want to take this job. He also says that if she has anything to say, come directly to the company. Lawyer Young refuses this case for her to come back and solve it herself. If a case is determined to be lost like this, you should take responsibility yourself. Why push it to other colleagues? Perhaps Young Wu was the only one who still doesn't understand that he is trying to help her return. When she is about to leave, Jun Ho chases after her. He asks her if she sees any gifts on the table. Unexpectedly, Young Wu says she didn't know it was a gift from him, so she threw it in the trash. He could say nothing because of her innocence. Seeing Jun Ho's eyes following Young Wu as she leaves, Jo Mi intuitively understands the eyes of the lover. In court, the eldest uncle carefully prepares the script to win the case. He refuses to admit what he said. No one can prove that they deceived Jo Mi's father. Suddenly Jo Mi's parents remember something. That day, their family invited a worker to repair the roof. Normally this person is a, a talkative and gossipy person. Surely he heard the whole thing. So everyone came to the house to find that worker. Sure enough, he had indeed heard their conversation, so they have a witness. Everyone breaths a sigh of relief. Juar Amy wants to create opportunities for Young Wu and Jun Ho, so she whispers to him. There's a dating mecca nearby. I will not be a light bulb, so take your chance. Jun Ho quickly understands what she meant. He takes Young Wu to the dating mecca. The two go for a walk together, but when they were alone together. Their conversation topic only revolves around sea creatures. Under the sunset, Jun Ho asks Young Wu why she quit her job as a lawyer. She replied that no matter her status as a lawyer or anything, in everyone's eyes she is still just an autistic patient. People with autism always need help. If you stand on the same side with me, you will lose. I should still pull out. Her words makes him feel both pity and regret. He wants to say that he is on the same side with her. Hopefully lawyer Young Wu can stand on the same side with me. Jun Ho's words are like a shining light. This is the first time she receives such a sincere compliment from someone. At the same time, Min Wu finds lawyer Young. He sees Young Wu quit her job without reason without being punished. She can also choose which cases she wants to take on. 
even though lawyer Young still refuses to handle her resignation letter. Those things make people in the same level as him feel unfairly treated. Lawyer Jun says that's because Young Wu is an excellent lawyer. Not only does she maintain a resilient attitude and passion for cases, but she also possesses sharp and innovative thinking. As long as Min Wu observes carefully, he will learn many things from her. On the second court date, the witness is bribed by the uncle and tells the opposite truth. When everyone is about to give up, Yang Wu's whale friend gives her a hunch. If there is no evidence, we can create evidence. Today is her grandfather's death anniversary, Zhuar Amy tries to get drunk and went to her eldest uncle's house. She pretends drunk and scolded her uncle for using money to buy witnesses in front of everyone. And the second uncle is a dog hiding behind the eldest uncle. The eldest uncle gets angry and slaps her. Zhuar Amy's father couldn't stand it anymore. A person always being gentle as him shows his attitude the first time, the whole family is in chaos. The eldest uncle keeps hitting without knowing that he is in a trap now. When the property recipient commits a crime against the person donating the property, or that person's blood relatives, the donor has the right to cancel the donation contract. Based on the regulation of Article 556, Clause 1.1, my client has additional legitimate reasons to decide to cancel the contract. The lawyer on the other side also says everything was intentionally set up by to deceive his client. Young Wu doesn't let him do it, asking if he had proof of that. Those words immediately leads him to a dead end. Her colleagues silently praise her great performance. The uncles, having lost miserably, take the initiative to admit their mistake. Zhuo Amy's father has the right to choose to inherit 10 billion alone, but he decides to forgive them. The compensation will be divided equally among all three families. After helping her friend recover the loss by her own efforts, so she regains her trust. She returns as someone who can help others. After withdrawing the resignation letter, she feels that the world around her become warmer. The boss assigns Min Wu and Young Wu to take on new tasks this time, but he doesn't tell her this. When she comes to find him, he says he forgot, then gives her a stack of documents, telling her to go check them out first, not even giving her time to ask if the customer has arrived. Even when she introduces herself, he interrupts. He basically doesn't give her a chance to express herself, completely showing that this case would be handled by him alone. Min Wu tries his best to get to know customer and make them forget Young Wu's existence. They invent a new model of an automatic teller machine. There was another company whose product was almost exactly the same as theirs. So he wants to sue the other side for copying the product. He credits his company with being the pioneer in inventing this technical project. The other party copied their products from A to Z. They have applied for a copyright license but have not been approved it. The details of the situation have been told but are still very vague. Lawyer Young is very disappointed with her performance today. He blames her for not preparing the documents in advance. But he doesn't know that all of this was Min Wu's plan. He considers himself and Young Wu to be competitors. Why does he have to share his documents with his opponents? Very quickly the first trial takes place. The opposing lawyer said that this engineering project had been shared publicly in an exhibition. Both companies just refer to that project to make their own products. But the client of Young Wu does not admit that their company had participated in that exhibition. This product is researched and produced by themselves. But the other side says that they already have another company that also makes this product. It's closed now. Both companies referenced other people's projects. There is absolutely no way anyone copied anyone. But the third company no longer maintains the product. Therefore, no one can prove that they were the first to discover it. Therefore, the trial has to be postponed. Young Wu begins to doubt, she supposes that her client's company's product is not of their own devising. When she mentions this issue, it also means that she has violated the great taboo of a lawyer for doubting her customers. Min Wu is completely different from her. He thinks that he just needs to help his client win this lawsuit. They have no right to doubt customers. To find the answer in her heart, that is how to guess whether a person is lying or telling the truth. Young Wu finds her best friend Zhuar Amy again. The two come to a conclusion just to look at the other's Globella. If that person lies, he will be sweating and doing other small movements. Young Wu finds his father to do the experiment. A customer comes to the restaurant but criticized everything. She immediately asks her father if he hated that guest. Unexpectedly, that aunt hears it. To protect the restaurant's business, Young Wu's father has to abandon their relationship. He says he doesn't know her, she is just a guest coming here to eat. From there, she also gets the answer. It turns out that the liar's expression will change. But she still wants to prove it again. So she continues to find Jun Ho to do experiments. Jun Ho, do you like Young Wu? The innocent words make Jun Ho sweat and quickly change the subject. Thanks to that, the awkward atmosphere is relieved. To investigate the lawsuit, Young Wu and Jun Ho go to the factory together. Unexpectedly, their client has a car accident. She originally intends to observe his glabella, hands and feet to judge whether he was lying. Who would have thought it would be such a coincidence this time? He was injured in all three parts. 
they can only go to the head of the research department to investigate. The head knows she is a lawyer and immediately tenses up, and keeps avoiding Young Wu's questions. His body also makes many small movements. Seeing him like that reminds Young Wu of Pinocchio. At this time, Min Wu calls and tells the client that he has this matter firmly in hand. Telling him not to worry, but this makes Young Wu very worried. Since she joined this law firm, she has won every case and has never lost. This time, working with Min Wu, she doesn't want to lose even more. So for the first time she does something against her conscience. She told the client that if the department head appeared in court to testify, it could have a very good effect. Then she says that because of the special nature of the case, a witness like him, even if he doesn't tell the truth, he won't have to face any punishment in court. After listening, the department head takes a deep breath. Young Wu tells him not to do those things. Because on court, others will easily see that he is stressed because of lying. Young Wu originally doesn't want to use this trick. But because of the interests of the client, she had to do so. But only Jun Ho can see the tension in her heart at this moment. Indeed, in this trial, because of the preparation, the witness performed extremely well. Even the client who knows the truth also sheds tears. Young Wu returns to her seat and lawyer Young praises her on the successful lawsuit. But Min Wu didn't bother to care about her. Then take all the credit for himself. After that, the client gives her a gift, a picture of sunflowers, representing good luck. He arbitrarily decides to take down her lawyer certificate and hangs it up. Then Young Wu received a letter from the opposing company. They asked her why she knows the truth but doesn't reveal it. Everyone relies on the same project to make the product. But the opponent wants to sue them for copying to prevent them from consuming the goods. The penalty document hasn't been issued but the customers have demanded to return the goods. The company is now on the brink of bankruptcy. Perhaps this is the result that unscrupulous lawyers like you want to see. After reading, she feels very sad. She realizes that she just wanted to win the case without finding out the truth. When she is heartbroken, it is only Su Yun who stands up to help her. Young Wu says Su Yun is like spring sunshine. Because Su Yun is always the one who helped Young Wu everything at law school. And was the one who stood up to protect her when her friends teased her. Hearing these sincere words makes Su Yun really moved. After many efforts, the lawsuit also makes new progress. The opponent found a machine that is enough to prove that everyone was referring to the same product. There is basically no copying. Everything has been resolved, the opposing company also win the lawsuit. But they are also about to face bankruptcy. During the trial process, their client's company signs contracts with all businesses. Their products have been sold out. This is his ultimate goal. Young Wu is sad not because this is the first time she loses a lawsuit, but because the truth has been buried. Just because of the desire to win the case, but this is the standard behavior of a lawyer. The person she must serve is her entruster. The customer's benefit is the minimum condition for her to work. Young Wu doubts herself for the first time. Not only did I not stop them, but I also became an enabler. Obviously I knew the truth but pretended to be stupid and deceive myself. Returning to her office, she holds the letter sent to her last time. Then take down the sunflower picture and paste the letter in its place. She uses it to warn herself. To be a lawyer, one must look at the truth and have professional ethics. Must be an excellent lawyer who clearly distinguishes between right and wrong. This woman takes her child to the orphanage. The nurses here are worried about her. Afraid that she'll get tired to hold the baby like that, so she tells her to put the baby aside. But the woman is afraid and says she has to give her baby sleeping pills to make her sleep. She can't wake her baby up. The nurse is very surprised and doesn't understand why she does that. The woman also seems to see the doubt in her eyes. She explains that she is a North Korean refugee. And she is going jail. She doesn't want her daughter to be bullied or despised. That's why she brings her to the orphanage. She also doesn't want her daughter to witness her leaving with her own eyes. That's why she gives her sleeping pills, but in the end the child wakes up and cries for her mother. Regardless of how much her child cries, she resolutely leaves. This time the lawsuit is handled by Su Yun, lawyer Young feels that she cares too much about this matter. Afraid that her mood will be unstable, he hoped Young Wu would go find Su Yun and talks to her. When Young Wu goes to Su Yun's office, she is surprised by the scene before her eyes. This place is now like a dump. She has completely turned this to her home. Not knowing what is to get off work or take a break, even comfortably changing clothes right in front of Young Wu. Su Yun wants Young Wu to come to prison with her to visit the litigant and learn about the situation of this case. To their surprise, the litigant is in a very good mood. She feels that this place where she can eat and sleep is much better than when she was outside. But before she could finish her exclamation, Young Wu interrupts and directly asks why she goes to prison. The litigant immediately told them everything. The foster mother who brings her here owed her a sum of money that was temporarily unpaid, and someone also owed her a sum of money. So she sent her and another person to collect the debt. She also agreed to go with that person to collect money, and at the same time she also owed that person a sum of money. So after collecting money, they will split it in half. 
When the two went to the debtor's house, they saw that the door wasn't locked. The two discussed that in order to get money, they had to act like gangsters. So they quickly took up their weapons. Her teammates broke anything on her way, wanting to show her power to collect money quickly. As a result, the neighbors downstairs heard the noise and called the police. Then both were arrested and sentenced to four years in prison. Before her trial she escaped. Until now, after more than four years, she returns to confess. The reason she ran away is only one, her husband died in a car accident. She herself is a refugee, she is afraid that when she is not here, there will be no one to take care of her daughter. At that time, her baby was still too little, if she went to prison, her daughter would no longer remember her face. Now that her child has grown up, she also takes her to the orphanage, so there's no need to worry anymore. She just hopes that like her accomplices, she will only be imprisoned for four years and then she can be reunited with her daughter. Her story is very touching. Young Wu is determined to help this woman reduce her crime to the lowest level. This left lawyer Young speechless. Originally, he told Young Wu to advise Su Yun not to be too stubborn. Now it's good that both of these people are the same. Young Wu, Su Yun and Jun Ho then go to meet the debtor that year. Unexpectedly, they see her husband brutally beating her. His actions makes Young Wu feel very scared. Su Yun and Jun Ho quickly protect her. They are about to call the police when the aunt next to them has already called. Very quickly the first trial took place. Young Wu interrupts the opposing lawyer's speech, and at the same time the judge also interrupts her. He interrupts simply to remind her that if she wants to ask later, she has to raise her hands up. The victim is also present, her face is injured, making everyone sitting here feel confused. Su Yun sees this and tells the truth, the wounds on her face were all caused by her husband beating her. It was the same a few years ago, that year he was also convicted for this matter. The next day, the defendant came to collect debt. Therefore, the police misunderstood that the victim's face was beaten by those two people. Unexpectedly, the victim says she doesn't remember anything. She doesn't admit she was beaten by her husband, making the defendant agitated. Lawyer Young wants to relieve the situation, so he intends to request a temporary halt to the trial. But Young Wu stops him because if he wants to interrupt the judge, he would have to raise his hand up. At the next trial, the doctor to assess the victim's injuries arrives. But he is an anti of North Korean refugees. Because of personal hatred, he denies that the wound on the victim's face was caused by her husband. He says that it was caused by the debt collector, the case quickly falls into disadvantage. Young Wu brings the defendant's daughter to meet her once before the final verdict. Looking at the scene of them embracing each other, Young Wu immediately remembered her old self. Why do other kids have their parents by their side, but she only has her dad? When she was young, her mother left her and her father. So Young Wu no longer remembers what her mother looked like. Even if one day when two pass each other on the street, they certainly won't recognize each other. Therefore, she also doesn't want other children to be without a mother like her. She meets the judge privately. Even though this is against the rules, she really wants to express her feelings. However, to others, what she says is just excuses, having no value. There is basically no sufficient basis, law is law, no humanity here. The judge appreciates the attitude of young people like them. But the result remains unchanged. Even though he said so, he quite acknowledges Young Wu's thoughts. He believes that the law is fair, and the final result does not disappoint everyone. The defendant is sentenced to one year and nine months in prison, reducing three years. The reason is very simple, people desperately look for excuses. But forget the most basic thing, that is the defendant confessed. This is the most basic reason to reduce the crime. Moreover, she didn't cause too much harm, even the owed money could not be collected. Besides, she is also a good mother, so the judge agrees to reduce the charges. Young Wu's law firm has a new case today. The government wants to build a new road that needs to go through a village. But all the villagers disagree. Before, the subway station was also built passing through their village. Then build a garbage incineration station in the village. Now, to build this road, many households would have to relocate it. But the amount of compensation is too little for people there. This ruins the villagers living, and the subway makes them have to listen to noise all day long. And this project causes air pollution here. They can endure those things, but this time building a new road, they resolutely do not agree. So the village chief came to find a lawyer, he wanted to sue the government. Hopefully they can reverse this decision or change to another route. But this lawsuit is very difficult, because after all this is a government lawsuit, the lawyer Young cannot guarantee anything. He plans to ask experts in this field before making a decision. After reviewing the situation, experts all say that going through their village was the best route and also the most economical. Therefore, he supposes that this lawsuit had no chance of winning and refused them. But the village chief does not want to give up. He told them to survey the village before deciding. Young Wu also follows them out. Last time she saw Jun Ho talking to Su Yun, so she misunderstood that he liked her. That makes her very disappointed, so she sadly creates chances for the two of them. Which makes the three of them extremely shy. 
Little does she know that the person Jun Ho actually likes is her. When going up mountain, Young Wu unfortunately falls, Jun Ho is the first person to help her up and brush off the dirt on her. Seeing her shirt is torn, he immediately takes off his shirt and puts it on her. He always shows concern for her anytime, anywhere. Actually, neither of them had the courage to express their feelings. After arriving at the village, they see the charming, poetic scenery here. With fresh air, they decide to keep the natural beauty of this place. So the next day they agree to accept the case. Everyone is full of vitality. But when faced with a huge amount of work, they immediately feel dizzy. Seeing Jun Ho's concern for Young Wu, Su Yun immediately sees that he had feelings for Young Wu. So she encourages Young Wu to muster up all her courage to face it. It seems that Jun Ho likes you, what are you planning? You also like Jun Ho, right? But Young Wu says it is difficult for someone to like her. I know for myself that you are very beautiful and I am autistic. Unexpectedly, after that, she is scolded by Su Yun. Don't say those words, it's not difficult. Hearing Su Yun's words, Young Wu remembered that day she was with Jun Ho. And she was sure she liked him too. So Young Wu ran finds Juar Amy to ask for help. Juar Amy tells her, if she wants to confirm whether she likes that person or not, just touch him. If her heart beats wildly, it proves that she likes that person, which makes Young Wu doubt life. She doesn't know what to do in the end. Very quickly the first trial has opened but unexpectedly the other side is the queen of lawyers, lawyer Taesumi. As soon as she appears, she overwhelms everyone present. It is clearly the first time meeting her, Young Wu feels like she has known her before. Sumi deserves the title of queen. After lawyer Young proposes the argument of using other road construction options, she immediately uses 3D simulation to deny those options. Moreover, just using a few short sentences can provoke people. Her purpose is to base on their language accusing them of causing chaos in society. A series of attack leaves Young Wu's side unable to react in time and put an end to the trial. Sumi's charisma and arrogant confidence made Young Wu feel she truly slayed. When Young Wu's father sees her looking up documents about her mother, he is surprised. Perhaps the thing he is most worried about has happened. Moreover, it seems that his daughter worships her very much. This makes him feel anxious, so he finds his juniors, Director Han. He thinks that everything is arranged by her with the goal one day to use Young Wu to defeat her mother. And make her law firm the best company. He hopes that if she really takes advantage of Young Wu, then once should be enough. Although a father like him does not want his child to be taken advantage of. He knows his daughter's autism has brought her a big obstacle. Even though she is the valedictorian of law school, no law firm dare to accept her. Only director Han's company gives her a chance. No matter what her purpose is, a father like him doesn't want to see his daughter be abandoned. When she has no value to use, he then goes out and coincidentally meets Young Wu. He quickly said he was here to find friends and then left. But Min Wu sees the problem that he says to come here for friends but coming out of the director's office. He guesses that Young Wu has backing, and that person is none other than director Han. During break time, Su Yun encounters Juno, so she talks to him frankly. She also sees that Juno actually has feelings for Young Wu. So she reminds him that Young Wu is a very sensitive person, if his emotions are just temporary, and he doesn't think about the future with her, then don't hurt her. The next trial begins, Young Wu finds clues about the construction company's violations of regulations. According to the law, before planning, their side must first conduct an assessment of the impact on the environment there. However, two years before the assessment, they have already completed the planning so that plan is invalid. Sumi objects that though they have completed the planning at that time, there are many options. The determination of planning options is still after the evaluation period. When the trial is about to fail again, Young Wu's fish friend arises again, bringing new thoughts to her. Young Wu continuously turned over the documents he has read in mind, finally finding the right answer. Before determining the construction plan, the company unilaterally rejects the people's complaint letter and overturned the assessment report. Young Wu could not only clearly state the name of the document, but also remember the details of the content. She recites without missing a word. That wonderful ability helps the case gain a chance to be reconsidered. That evening, after work Young Wu calls Jun Ho and asks if she could touch him. She wants to confirm if she likes him. Don't you have to touch me to confirm? I want to test how fast my heart can beat when I touch you. However, when Jun Ho approaches, she suddenly steps back. When their eyes meet, Young Wu suddenly closes her eyes. But when they are about to kiss, Young Wu feels like her heart is exploding, so she pushes him away and runs away. After returning home, Mr. Guang Ho, in order to prevent her from seeing her mother, tells her about her admission to the Hanbara law firm. It is because of his relationship with Director Han. He wants to use it as a reason for Young Wu to give up being a lawyer. This truth shocks her. She thinks it is because of her ability, but it thanks to a relationship. This makes her unable to accept it. At the same time, Min Wu posts anonymously on the company's internal forum. 
He implies that Young Wu relies on her father and the director's friendship to go backdoor. He believes that this is unfair to employees who are recruited by ability. This quickly becomes a hot topic within the company for co-workers to chat about. Though the post is anonymous, Su Yun swiftly sees through it. She asks him why he did that. Of course, she isn't the only one who knows it. Director Han uses the excuse of the lawsuit to come here to give everyone her opinion, but actually, to warn Min Wu. They come up with a countermeasure for this lawsuit. It is to take the judge to visit the scene so that he can see the actual situation there. Hope the result can be changed. But the director thinks they are too naive. Even so, times will not change. So she suggests that they bring reporters along, creating a wave of public opinion to put pressure on them. It's like someone posted on the company forum. Although this statement of hers does not point out anyone, it has already made one nervous. Su Yun also tells this to Young Wu. But she admits that she is here thanks to the relationship between her father and director Han. This makes Su Yun very angry. It is clear that Young Wu is an excellent lawyer and does much better than others. Just because you have autism, you lose your confidence. Su Yun tells Young Wu, if Min Wu is still like that, don't be polite to him. Aggressively teach him a lesson. The day the judge goes to the site, an unexpected situation happens. Su Mi proposes using high compensation to make the villagers no longer oppose the construction. Some have accepted to sign. The village chef leads everyone to the ancient tree, aiming to impress everyone by the beautiful nature. But the weather isn't very supportive, it ruins the atmosphere. So the judge feels he doesn't need to see anymore, and most of the villagers have agreed. Then the petition will be returned, and the opposing lawyer also takes this opportunity to invite Young Wu to the company. She hopes that after this, she can go to Taesan to work. Unexpectedly, their conversation was seen by Min Wu. When Young Wu returns, he starts making innuendos. This time Young Wu is tougher if you say so again. I'll hit you on the head or punch you hard in the stomach. I won't let you bully me anymore. Young Wu's appearance makes him angry. He even admits that he is the one who posted about her. After that, he repeats Young Wu goes back door to become a lawyer. Hearing that, Young Wu also feels that she should learn to be independent. She can't be like what others say, just rely on her father. When she gets home, she tells her father that she wants to work in Taesan. Then, packing her bags and going out to live. Her father has no choice but to tell her the hidden truth. That woman is your mother, the one who gave birth to you. In a moment of confusion, Young Wu falls down the stairs. In the hospital, her father finally tells her everything about the past. He and her mother knew each other in college, but because of their impulsive youth, they had her. Because of that, they woke up. How can a poor guy be worthy of a rich girl? Both were very young. Because of her future, her mother broke up with him to remove Young Wu. Her father knelt down and begged Su Mi to give birth to her. Then he would take her away from and never appear in front of her mother again. Just like that, Young Wu was born and they never met again. As promised, Young Wu suddenly sits up. When the wind of inspiration blows, the whale jumps out of the water. Young Wu finds the key to fix the situation. The old tree in the village is recognized by experts as a natural conservation heritage. It just hasn't been licensed yet, and needs to be assessed. Then apply for a license to become a conservation area. So more than 100 square kilometers will be preserved and no one can touch it. Even building a road is not allowed. They would still be considered victorious. But despite winning, Young Wu is not very happy. After the trial ends, she meets her mother, she wants to tell her about their relationship. I'm Mr. Guangho's daughter, I also know who Taesumi really is. So I think I can't work at Taesan. I originally planned to leave Hanbara because I want to be independent from my father and become an independent person. But I couldn't go to my mother's place. That person even gave birth and then abandoned me. Now that mother doesn't even recognize me. Young Wu's mother tries to control her emotions and asks if she hated her. But she doesn't know this question is too difficult. For someone who doesn't recognize emotions like Young Wu, she doesn't really know what hatred feels like. Young Wu recalls and says, when the two of them stood under the old tree talking, she was very happy. All these children are on their way to that bus, not to go home but to the tutoring centers. On the bus, the driver is sleeping soundly in the passenger seat. And in the driver's seat is a strange young man. He introduced himself as Bang Gu Pong. Gu Pong is the commander-in-chief of the Children's Liberation Army. Gu Pong announces to take over this bus. The bus will no longer go to the academy but take the students out to play. Thanks to his sense of humor, Gu Pong wins the hearts of the students on the bus. He also says if anyone wants to study, please get off the bus. The other children will go out to play to free their youth. Hearing that they can go out, the students happily agree without telling their parents. After that, Gu Pong drives the bus to a mountain and plays with the students. Nearly four hours after, the driver regains consciousness and calls to the police. At this time, Juno and Young Wu are at court, Young Wu's face has eyelashes. It could have been simple to be brushed off, but Juno seems extremely stressed. 
This intimate action of Juno makes Young Wu remember that night. Her heart is pounding again, Young Wu realizes that it is because she already likes Juno that she has this feeling. Young Wu's heart is beating madly, so she doesn't dare to stay any longer, and runs away. This time, the case she is in charge of is Gu Pong's child kidnapping case. Gu Pong is the son of Mujin Academy's principal. He robs the car of the academy that his mother manages. Although he does not cause any harm, he is still sued by the procuracy for kidnapping minors. Gu Pong tells Young Wu that his goal is to help children laugh happily. Although he doesn't seem that bad at first glance, Young Wu never expects that Pipong would be her most unreliable defendant. Answering the judge's question, Gu Pong declared himself the commander-in-chief of the Children's Liberation Army. Address is to live in the hearts of children. The answer is so unusual and arrogant that Young Wu doesn't know what to say. As a result, Gu Pong is placed in temporary detention by the judge. At the trial, his mother is so into nurturing others' child, without realizing that her child is going in the wrong direction. She asks that for her son not going to jail, she is willing to do everything. Not only is Young Wu's case now unfavorable, but since she confessed her love, Juno also has no opinion. Young Wu feels a headache and doesn't know what to do. Juar Amy confirms that Juno already likes Young Wu. Her best friend tells Young Wu to act when she likes someone. Those words enlightens the baby whale. The next day when she meets Gu Pong, he tells her. Right now those kids are not happy at all. They are arranged by adults to give them all kinds of classes. Studying takes all of their time as if they are trapped between walls. School, academy, and parents are the biggest enemies in their growing up process. During the four hours that he spent with the children, he let them play freely and do what they found fun. Let them roast sweet potatoes themselves, then each child smiles brightly like the sun. To let the children see something new and still have fun, that is his purpose in taking the children to the mountain. Young Wu suddenly discovers that the Gu Pong seems to be emitting some special brilliant aura. When it's time to eat, Young Wu unexpectedly does not talk about whales but only about Gu Pong. It makes Juno feel bitter, but he can't do anything. He asks Young Wu why she mentions him. She replies because she enjoys being with Gu Pong. Juno feels jealous because it is the first time Young Wu talking about someone else so happily. At this moment, Young Wu suddenly remembers what her friend said. She quickly takes the initiative to pull out a chair for Juno. Seeing that he likes to eat pickled radish, she immediately gives him her pickled radish. It turns out liking someone is that simple. As for Juno, he keeps feeling like there is something wrong but can't say it. On the contrary, Young Wu looks at him and keeps smiling innocently. On the trial day, Young Wu defends Gu Pong, but he suddenly admits all the charges. Actively admit that he has drugged the driver and takes the children to the mountain. I don't want to give the kids the impression of lying. The defendant objects to the defense attorney's words. This left the judges stunned. The lawyers have no choice but to find a way from the children's parents. If the kids all really like Gu Pong, maybe they can convince their parents not to pursue anymore. Young Wu and Juno go to where the children usually go, learning that the extra class lasts from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. If going to the bathroom more than twice during that time, one will be considered lazy. It is also stipulated that it is before 10 p.m. They are not allowed to eat, after school they only have 10 minutes to fully eat. It's the type of study that's super pressured like a prison. Young Wu notices that the children are all wearing acorns, similar to the one of Gu Pong. In order to be forgiven by the parents and help her son avoid going to jail, the headmaster kneels down in front of them to beg. She says Gu Pong is a stupid child with mental problems. He doesn't understand what he says means. She also guarantees that she would strictly guard her son in the future. In the end, the parents signed to withdraw the petition. Before leaving, Young Wu couldn't help but say she shouldn't have said Gu Pong is a stupid child. The headmaster is made to laugh by her words. How one who only knows him in a few days can understand better than a mother like her. Young Wu keeps saying, I've only met him a few times but I can still see he's good. Shouldn't a mother like you think better? Shouldn't you open your heart to listen to what he wants to say? This statement deeply shocks the headmaster. At the court, the doctor says that if Gu Pong had such paranoia, he could avoid punishment. But at this moment Young Wu's hunch wind suddenly blows. The whale suddenly appears in the court, as if it wants to say something to Young Wu. So Young Wu stands up and talks about the super pressured learning style at the academy. Along with the situation of children losing their childhood, making everyone agree. Young Wu proves Gu Pong's idea not wrong. He is also not a paranoid patient. Seeing the original plan is about to collapse. Lawyer Young just intends to stop her. Gu Pong proactively says he wants to hear Young Wu says. The headmaster also sees her son with such an expression for the first time. At this moment, Gu Pong's eyes seems to radiate endless radiance. If following the path of paranoia, he can avoid the practice of imprisonment. But what Young Wu cannot accept is that calling a person who radiates a positive aura, a mental patient. This is extremely insulting. As the defendant's attorney, she will protect the defendant's spiritual dignity. Gu Pong also expresses that he does not regret what he did. 
if he has the opportunity, he will strive hard for his beliefs. At this time, the case could not be fixed. The case, which could have been resolved, is ruined by Young Wu. Min Wu angrily asks Lawyer Young why Young Wu is not punished. Unexpectedly, Lawyer Young feels disappointed with his attitude. He says Min Wu seems to like punishment so much that he wrote such a post on the company forum. If you disagree while working, you should discuss it together to resolve the issue. Always trying to distinguish right or wrong for punishment. I don't work like that. Finally during the announcement, the children were all brought here. Gu Peng also teaches them a lesson that having fun while growing up isn't wrong. He says even if they encounter difficulties later on, they must continue bravely. When Young Wu gets off work, Jun Ho finally musters up the courage to confess his love to her. I like you. Hearing Juno's confession made Young Wu's head empty. She doesn't know how to face it. She panics and chooses to run away. Her best friend is angered by Young Wu's actions. Opportunity comes to you but you don't know how to grasp it. Jo Mi hurriedly comforts Young Wu. If Jun Ho has confessed, then they can try dating and slowly get to know each other. So Young Wu specially creates a to-do list when dating with Jun Ho. Jun Ho is surprised by this unique idea and the relationship was finally determined. How does it feel to go on a date with someone with autism? Before the two are about to hold hands, Young Wu takes out her phone to use the stopwatch. Because of the effects of autism, she cannot hold hands like a normal person. Even her boyfriend, she could only endure for 57 seconds. Jun Ho hold Young Wu's hand for the first time, he feels really happy. And Young Wu is also immersed in it. But happy times are short, every second passes very quickly. In an instant, she reaches the limit she can endure. The next day, on the subway, Young Wu coincidentally meets the police arresting criminals. She points out the illegality in the execution process. The police are surprised and asks if she is a lawyer. Young Wu introduces herself as a lawyer at Hanbara Law Firm. Which makes her surprised is because she introduces herself. That guy, Yang Zhong El, directly finds her to defend himself. It turns out that when he joins an organization for disabled people, he and a disabled girl named Hai Yang fall in love and have already made love. After that, Zhang Ayel is sued by the girl's mother. Although it's hard to believe normal people to love the disabled, Su Yun said. Disabled people are very simple, no one can take away their right to love and their love path. Young Wu sympathizes so she agrees to accept this mission. Though she knows the win rate is very low, she still defends the case. Lawyer Young also supports Young Wu. To avoid her getting hurt, he tells Su Yun to advise Young Wu to stay calm. At the trial, as the defendant's lawyer, Young Wu uses her identity as an autistic lawyer to speak to minimize everyone's emotional shock. But when she shows a conversation about Zhang Ayel and Hai Yang's relationship, to conclude that the two are in a normal love relationship. This immediately leads to a scolding. The doctor says that the mentally disabled girl wouldn't be able to distinguish if the other has bad intention or not. Furthermore, in the report, the girl records that during sex she felt both scared and disliked. The case seems to be very clear since the victim's description is decisive. In front of the bathroom, Hai Yang looks for Young Wu as if she has something to say. But right then, her mother appears and stops her. Hai Yong can only say, I'm by myself when I go to the BA, and then is dragged away by her mother. But Young Wu has never heard of this place. At this time, Su Yun tells Young Wu that Zhang Ael has joined a similar group before and falls in love with another mentally disabled person. Because of that, he is still under the police investigation. Young Wu in anger can't accept the act of bullying disabled people. Therefore, she decides to withdraw from this case. In the evening, Young Wu and Jun Ho go on a date and meet his classmate by chance. The girl realizes that Young Wu is the disabled before, and thinks that Jun Ho is just pitying her. Young Wu soon gets used to such discriminatory remarks. Jun Ho quickly explains, seeing that his classmates don't believe, he admits they are dating. Young Wu suddenly sees that the girl's cup has the word BA printed on it, and immediately her wind of inspiration blues. The whale jumps out of the water again. Young Wu has a big discovery. It turns out that BA is the place where the girl wants to meet Young Wu. She indeed meets her there. She says that she and Zhang Ayel truly love each other. The statement she gives to the police is also what her mother forces her to say. Because her mother hates men, feels there is nothing good about men. Young Wu quickly reminds that Zhang Ayel has previously relied on serving community to date with the disabled. Hai Yang knows these things, and even so she still likes him unconditionally. Young Wu realizes she has misunderstood. So she says that as long as Hai Yang tells the truth in court, Zhang Ayel wouldn't have to go to jail. But on the trial day, when the judge reads the victim's statement, under strong pressure from her mother, Hai Yang is still unable to tell the truth. And the final result of the case is that Zhang Ayel is sentenced to two years in prison. Hai Yang doesn't dare tell the truth, she can only sit there and cry for her boyfriend. Young Wu's heart also hurt, can't people with disabilities really be able to be happy in love? At night when Jun Ho and his classmates gather, one of his friends thinks, 
A love with a disabled person isn't a real love, it is just pity for the poor girl. He also says disrespectful words to Young Woo, making Jun Ho so angry that he punches him right away. After returning home, he meets Young Woo in the hallway. She is filled with insecurities because of the case. For disabled people, just liking them doesn't seem to be enough. Even when she says this is love. If others say it's not, then it is not love. Jun Ho senses Young Woo's insecurity. So even if others said it isn't, if he says it is love then it is love. Then, he immediately approaches Young Wu, while she instinctively backs up. To resolve her insecurity, Jun Ho takes a step back. Young Wu's eyes look straight at Jun Ho. Perhaps thanks to love, she bravely takes a step forward and proactively kisses him. But elsewhere, Sumi reaches out to Young Wu's father for the first time after more than 20 years. To avoid being exposed that Young Wu is an illegitimate child, which affects her participation in the election. She wants the father and daughter to work at her branch in the US. This scene is captured by a reporter. To find out more information about Young Wu, he reveals this exclusive news to Min Wu. This truth makes it hard to believe. Min Wu finds a colleague who studied with Sumi, and knows that she had actually quit school for a year. Calculating the time, it coincides with the time Young Wu was born. The next working day, Young Wu goes early and sits in front of the company door, just for waiting for Jun Ho. Having difficulty recognizing emotions, she does not know basic awareness of emotions. Even though Jun Ho passes in front of her, she sits still without speaking. Unless he discovers her first. Jun Ho wonders why Young Wu is sitting here. Young Wu said because she wants to see him, so she waits here. Jun Ho is very curious if she was waiting for him, why didn't she call him? Just now, he almost goes away. Young Wu thinks for a while and says her purpose is just to see him. And now she has seen him. Young Wu's answer always surprises him and cannot be predicted. Right now Young Wu receives a new case. A man carries a woman on his back, seemingly unaware of the eyes of those around him. Because her high heel was broken, her husband worries about her. So he keeps carrying her to the office. Then he places his wife on the chair to feel secure. Everyone can sense the smell of love. The two of them are the trustees of the case. The husband and two friends buy three lottery tickets together, unexpectedly one of them wins the first prize. Total prizes are up to 6.2 billion. They promise to divide it equally into three parts if they win the prize. But their friends are plastic. The other guy now betrays him and refuses to admit that he makes such an agreement. Because, it is only a verbal agreement and nothing is recorded in writing or recording. So it is very difficult to prove the authenticity of that agreement. In addition, the money used to buy lottery tickets is obtained from illegal illegal gambling. Which violates civil law, making them an unprotected case. When the husband hears that, he panics and says to discuss with his friends later to hide the source of the money. Young Wu disagrees. Are you going to lie? Lying in court is absolutely unacceptable. At this point, the wife begins to use their sympathy, saying he is a good husband and father. Not long ago, he and his friend opened a coffee shop and were scammed. Right now, they can only live in a rented house with their two children. The whole family relies on a restaurant, they just want to be able to claim the bonus. Their whole family can escape from difficult situations. Perhaps being touched by their sincere feelings, Young Wu decides to help him again. So she and the husband go to meet the witness. Luckily, the waiter helping them buy lottery tickets hears about their agreement to divide the prize money. If the waiter is willing to go to court to testify, his chances of winning will increase greatly. But the waiter is very afraid of going to court. So the husband quickly pulls him back and promises to repay him if he agrees to testify. But Young Wu says he couldn't give him money. Agreement to provide money that exceeds a person's daily wage so that someone can testify is illegal. Testimony will be considered invalid. Seeing Young Wu being so stubborn, the husband can only silently express his idea to the waiter. But on the trial day, the waiter does not appear. Because he is an illegal immigrant, if he comes to testify, he will likely be deported. This time they once again fall into a deadlock. When Young Wu is working overtime, she calls Juno. Before receiving the call, Juno quickly adjusts his appearance and voice. But as soon as he answers, Young Wu is about to hang up. Because she makes the video call just to see Juno, now that she's seen him, her goal is achieved. But Juno doesn't want to hang up the phone yet. He tells Young Wu to consider his feelings too. Later, please confirm if I want to hang up or not. Under Juno's guidance, Young Wu learns to tell jokes for the first time. The two seem to get along very well and talk extremely happily. Before hanging up the phone, Young Wu tells Juno, she doesn't know why lately his figure keeps appearing in her mind. Just like whales. This is a feeling she has never had before. For people with ASD like Young Wu, it is impossible to accurately judge emotions like this. When Juno hears her say that, he happily smiles to himself. On the trial day, a new witness suddenly appears. Unexpectedly, it is the girl working at the bar that they meet before. She says she heard the three promise to share the prize equally. 
the one winning the prize says she is lying, and that she has an illicit relationship with the husband, and claims that they are scammers and have colluded in advance with the plaintiff. But he has no proof, and the waitress of course doesn't accept that. The husband sitting beside secretly gives her a heart. The waitress reveals a satisfied smile, but they don't know that Young Wu sitting on the side sees everything. The intuition makes Young Wu feel that something is very strange. She closely observes those two people, always feeling like something is wrong. In the end, thanks to those testimonies, the case has won. The two people each receive 1.4 billion won. His wife is so happy that she can't hold back her tears of happiness. But she doesn't see that her husband's eyes when he looks at her are filled with hate. The bad husband begins to reveal his true nature after finishing this play. He grabs his wife's hand and pretends to comfort her. The next day, this husband happily brings the boxed lunch his wife made to thank Young Wu. But then he asks her, if he divorces his wife, will he have to divide the bonus? Young Wu doesn't think much and says that the prize is due to luck, so it is not part of the assets to be divided. When that guy hears that, he happily leaves. Only then does Young Wu realize that she seems to have done something wrong. So she quickly finds Juno and Suyun to negotiate. That despicable guy wants to abandon his family after receiving money. But that guy is their entruster, they can't directly tell the wife about this. So Juno quickly suggests they use objects to represent people. Just like that, the two silently tell the wife the true face of that ungrateful husband. If she wants to divide assets, the only chance is to get evidence of that guy's promise to his wife. When Juno and Young Wu go to meet that man's wife, they see him and the bar girl being intimate with each other, both of them openly having an affair. That ungrateful guy has a bonus of 1.4 billion, and he can't suppress his nature anymore. He is secretly finding way to divorce his wife. Young Wu doesn't want to see his wife to be deceived. But when they go to meet her, they just catch that husband causing trouble. Wait until after he leaves, they go in to help her. It turns out that once he gets the money, he starts wasting it and spends 300 million to buy a luxury car. The wife does not agree, which is why there was a scene he got mad earlier. At this time, she still doesn't know that her husband's remaining car is much more expensive. She still thinks her husband treats her very well. When Young Wu hears it, she feels angry. So she and Juno sit down and follow the plan. They deliberately speak loudly to tell a story. Except for changing people's names to object names, the rest is exactly the same as her family's story. In that story, the husband not only wants a divorce but also does not want to give his wife and children any money. It sounds even more infuriating when that bad guy has a lover outside. There is a saying that honor charges manners. It's truly unbelievable. Young Wu sees that the wife is still half doubtful, so she could only remind her. If you don't want to be dumped by that bad guy like that, she must get voice record for evidence. Unexpectedly, a few days later, his wife comes to the law office. Even though she doesn't want to believe it, that husband has already proposed a divorce. To force her to sign, he goes to the restaurant every day to cause trouble. When her child and try to stop him, that cruel guy even attacks his own children. That's when she remembers Young Wu once reminded her to collect evidence. But that guy has already prepared early so that he won't have to share any money with them. Not only does he use his brother's card to receive the money, but her intention to record is also exposed. He doesn't give her any chance to hold his weakness. Although lawyer Young and Young Wu strongly sympathize with her. But after all, he is their previous entruster, so they couldn't take on this case. Moreover, in a situation where there is no evidence, the best result is just to get a little more child support fee. When Juno and Young Wu come home with her, they see that guy getting out of his luxury car. He walks arrogantly. So people say not afraid of the rich, only afraid of the newly rich. His despicable face scares Young Wu. He then challenges them to go over there. The wife doesn't want to quarrel here so she decides to get in the car and leave. But that husband doesn't want things to stop here. He quickly gets into the car to chase, speeding and passing recklessly towards the three. But when the law of karma takes effect, karma doesn't spare anyone. When he crosses the street despite the red light, he is hit straight by another car from the side. Young Wu sees it with her own eyes and is seriously shocked. Jun Ho immediately comes to her and hugs her tightly to help her calm down. Finally, the wife has the right to use all assets, go around in a big circle and finally return to its rightful owner. After a period of getting to know each other, Young Wu overcomes her insecurity. She bravely takes a big step. Meanwhile, Min Wu discovers that Young Wu is Sumi's illegitimate child. So he uses his dirty tactic to threaten her to let him work at Taesan Law Firm. Hearing that, she immediately makes a request. If Min Wu can make Young Wu leave Hanbara, no matter if she thinks for herself or is kicked out, then he will become Taesan's lawyer and her direct subordinate. Young Wu is caught kissing her boyfriend by her father in front of the house. If he didn't see it with his own eyes, he would never think she has a boyfriend. After a period of intense psychological struggle, he decided to ask a little to make sure his daughter is not deceived. 
Unexpectedly, Young Wu denies she has a boyfriend, making him surprised. Since when did his naive daughter already know how to lie? Hiding so carefully that even her dad never notices it. This performance deserves an Oscar. He says directly that he sees her kissing Juno downstairs. So the little secret has been discovered. When questioned by her father, Young Wu says they are not officially dating yet. Because of physical and psychological obstacles, she cannot say accurately about her emotional problems. So for her, right now the two are just dating to get to know each other more deeply, but not lovers. When her father hears about such a simple story, he immediately becomes angry. You haven't officially dated yet, but you already kiss. He must carefully examine anyone who wants to steal his little daughter away. Today Young Wu receives a very difficult case. When the company adjusts its personnel, they introduce a condition for spouses working here. Only one person can stay. If no one proactively submits a resignation letter, the company will remove the husbands by default, and most of the wives will proactively resign. But two female employees sue the company for discrimination against women. The plaintiff's lawyer specializes in cases related to women and human rights. But the subjects she sued were often companies and corporations, so even though she had rich experience, she had never won. Even a female colleague in the company comes to testify. She says the company only makes normal personnel adjustments and offers humanitarian policies. She also criticizes those who sued the company. But unexpectedly, the plaintiff's lawyer exposes her that her husband has cancer and needs her to take care. The company gives her a three-month paid leave so she could testify in court. After the trial, those two colleagues not only do not blame her for helping the company testify, but also encourage her. She feels guilty, so she keeps apologizing. Before leaving, the two female employees also buy food for the lawyer. Lawyer Young is surprised that the plaintiff treated the defendant's lawyer so enthusiastically. Young Wu is attracted to her decorations. Even though they eat their food, work still has to be done. They need to find more evidence that the two female employees actively resign. On the way, Young Wu discovers a nearby taxi with advertising stickers, similar to the employees' decorations. Maybe that's the clue they're looking for. Su Yun and Min Wu think she is just too sensitive. But Juno immediately turns around and chases the taxi. Professional treatment of infertility, the women hospital. That night, Min Wu thinks about his transaction with lawyer Sumi again. He comes up with a perfect plan to make Young Wu leave the Hanbara lawyer's office. How could a mother not stop at making others to harm her daughter? Min Wu wants to transfer to Taesan Law Firm, so. He must find a way to make Young Wu leave Hanbara. He decides to start by defaming Hanbara. That night, he goes to Young Wu's office and starts complaining to her. Sometimes you will have to take on some jobs that are not right even helping those with money and power, and oppressing the weak. Then, he seems like to accidentally mention the company's personnel adjustment case they have just accepted. The way to reduce one person in each couple is suggested by Hanbara, and they have already devised strategies to deal with all the parts not beneficial for the company. Legally, from the very beginning, their actions has the purpose of discriminating against women. Then, before leaving, Min Wu gives Young Wu all the detailed documents related to the case. She immediately finds lawyer Young because she sees those things are completely a trick designed to trick the female employees. If they win, they will all become abettors in this case. Using the weak employees are infertile as an attack point. Doing so is really despicable. Young Wu believes that they can no longer refuse this case. But at least they should not use such dirty tricks to harm the other party. That way of speaking makes lawyer Young very angry. He says lawyers are not superheroes who protect the world with love and friendship. Their responsibility is to advocate, put the protection of the entrusters' interests first, and make every effort to prevent or minimize the damage suffered by the entruster. That is the duty of a lawyer. Young Wu still doesn't give up and wants to continue explaining, but lawyer Young bangs the table angrily. Her words without stance make him get angry. It's up to the judge to judge right or wrong, not the lawyer. Young Wu asks are you angry? She tells him a series of typical characteristics of human anger. But Young Wu is so confused, making Lawyer Young both angry and find her very cute. He put her in charge of questioning, but if she doesn't want to do it, he himself will show up. His words makes her feel extremely confused like it is a joke so she goes to Jun Ho to ask for advice. Is it true that judging right or wrong is the judge's right, and the lawyer must concentrate on defending the client? Jun Ho says that whether a new lawyer or an experienced lawyer all have their own answer. But they cannot come to a conclusion in a moment and must give themselves time to think. No matter what decision Young Wu makes, he will support it unconditionally. The day the judge was in court, Young Wu overcame his own struggles. The questioning is still carried out as plan. Because the plaintiff has infertility and has a reproductive plan, so when the company proposes to cut staff, she would definitely accept. Although attacking the weak point will hurt the other side, she still can't find the answer for herself. Young Wu has no other choice. After the trial, the plaintiff's lawyer proactively comes to meet her. She has read about her in the newspaper before. 
Even though she is an opponent, she highly praises an autistic lawyer like her. She even proactively invites her to work with her, to speak up for women and workers. Min Wu stands from afar watching that scene and is secretly happy. With just one more step, he could make Young Wu unable to change the situation. The couple has a date full of innocent and strange things. Young Wu and Juno go on a date but just play a game of finding differences all day. With her ability to observe, Young Wu is like the king of the game. She defeats Juno and makes him unable to do anything. She is immersed in the game and completely forgets about the existence of her lover. On the way home, he sees her looking around. From the moment her father says he saw them kissing, Young Wu always feels like he is watching her. Even though her father tells her to bring Juno home to meet him, Young Wu has no intention of doing so. Because the two has not officially started dating yet, Juno blankly asks why they haven't officially started yet. In Young Wu's mind, if they haven't officially said they're dating, it's not considered an official relationship. Juno feels himself like an idiot, he is always trying to find ways to make her happy. On weekends, Young Wu goes all day to collect trash or plays find the difference games all day. Everything seems to be torturing him, they are not interesting to him at all. Young Wu asks him why he doesn't feel happy but still tries to continue playing. Juno could only reply because he likes her. Yet until now we are still not considered officially dating. I really feel so sad. At the same time, Min Wu sneaks into Young Wu's office. He searches for documents, pastes the delivery address, and adds her business card. Those are documents that can turn the tide of the case. Just send them out in Young Wu's name, then when the plaintiff's side opens in court. She will be kicked out of Hanbara. Everything goes according to plan, but soon Min Wu has to surprise. Because the plaintiff's lawyer does not open that document, she finds new evidence. The handbook of the head of the human resources department of that company. Clearly recorded the senior leader's plan to force female employees to quit. Lawyer Yung opines that the evidence they have is taken by unclear way, so it could not be valid. Young Wu reminds him that it is an article of the criminal code. But this case is a civil proceeding, unexpectedly, the mic is not turned off. The plaintiff's lawyer clings to that as a way out and strongly gives a rebuttal. Young Wu notices the opponent's actions and sees the person helping them get the notebook. It is none other than the female colleague who testifies for the company. However, the final verdict is still that the company wins the lawsuit. Because although the discriminatory behavior against women is real, the fact that female employees voluntarily quit jobs is also real. Plaintiff's attorney appears to have lost, but in fact she has won. After the case ends, she gives the documents that Min Wu has secretly sent to Young Wu. If she used this thing, Young Wu would definitely get into trouble. As she sees it, she knows this is a trick to harm her. She alerts Young Wu to raise caution to her colleagues. The next day, the homeowner comes to find Young Wu. On the way to move house, he is charged an unreasonable toll. Going on the public way near the landscape area, he's forced to pay sightseeing fee. Though there is 3,000 for the ticket, he couldn't bear this anger. He knows this lawsuit is a waste of money, but he determines. No matter how much litigation costs, he still wants to receive an explanation. What is more important is that the location is on Jeju Island. That is Young Wu's favorite place with whales. She has always wanted to go there, but big law offices won't pay attention to this type of small case. Min Wu also compares stupid Young Wu to a whale. She innocently thinks of the lovely whales in the sea. She doesn't expect Min Wu to appreciate her so much. She feels shy and smiles brightly, but she doesn't have much hope at first. Unexpectedly, lawyer Young not only happily agrees, but also decides to bring team members along, and also invites Juno to go with them. This is no different than a double job. Juno also decides to seize this opportunity to take Young Wu to meet his sister living on Jeju Island. Going to meet his sister, for someone with psychological difficulties like her. The feeling is like carrying a burden on shoulders. Juare Mi reminds Young Wu to definitely remember three factors. Entering the door, praise the beautiful house. Eating, say the food is delicious and the cooking ability is excellent. If there are fruits, actively show that you are good at peeling fruit. The most important thing is to maintain your bright smile. To ensure Young Wu has a smooth meeting, Juare Mi and the shop owner decide to follow along. For such a small case to mobilize people from the whole group. This is absolutely not the style of Lawyer Young. Director Han discovers that Lawyer Young seems to have something strange. Lawyer Young just smiles. A few days ago while at work, he coughs up blood and receives a diagnosis at the hospital. On the day of departure, Lawyer Young changes his usual serious attire, making everyone surprised. Does dressing like this look like going on a business trip? Young Wu experienced sitting on a plane for the first time. This strange new feeling makes her nervously shout out. When arriving at the car, Lawyer Young does not sit with his colleagues, but sits in Juare Mi's convertible. Everyone keeps feeling strange but can't point it out. Everyone follows the guidance of the immoral path. Sure enough, they encounter a toll station of the landscape area. Regardless of whether to go sightseeing or not, just passing by requires paying a toll. The toll staff doesn't expect that this time he would meet all laywers. 
What the law dictionary Young Wu says makes he doubt his life. Su Yun secretly uses a camera to record the entire process. After getting the clue, they still obediently pay the money. The road is surrounded by trees, the green foliage shields the scorching heat of the sun. It seemed that they return to the arms of nature. No one notices that at this time, lawyer Young is in tears. A few days later, at the trial Young Wu is preparing to speak when she feels strong oppression from her opponent. When dozens of eyes look at you, are you afraid? This time it is a case related to a temple considered a scenic spot that collects tolls. The passerby follows the immoral instructions to the road near the temple. The temple builds a toll booth at a nearby intersection. The location is just right at which having no way to turn around. If turning around, they will be fined. Therefore, whether passing by or visiting, they can only pay the entrance fee. According to the plan, the road is originally built for the convenience of foreign tourists. Both sides each have their own opinion about paying the entrance fee. In the evening, seeing everyone works overtime to process documents, Lawyer Young is different from the usual days, and tells them to put documents aside. It's very difficult for everyone to go on a trip together once, relax a bit. Although it seems very strange, no one can expect that. Lawyer Young's remaining time is running out. The reason he brings everyone to Jeju Island to handle the case. Also because this place once left behind his regrets which is difficult to make up for his empty soul. Initially, he and his wife went on their honeymoon here. But because he was so addicted to work that he called and replied to messages anytime, anywhere. Lawyer Young was not aware that his wife was left aside. He even worked overtime until midnight and ignored the candlelit dinner that his wife had painstakingly prepared. It wasn't until eight years later that his wife proposes a divorce that he completely wakes up. He has been irresponsible for so many years. However, he doesn't have a chance to make up for it. At night, Young Wu and Ju Amy see Lawyer Young alone and miserable in the yard. He sits in the cold and cries pitifully. The two just think he is recalling his past and they don't think much. The next day, Young Wu fully prepares as planned. She is fully equipped with the necessary accessories to go to watch whales with Junho. But in the end, no whales are discovered. It's like there is a warning in fate. Going to meet his sitter next will also not go well. Hello, my name is Young Wu, whether reading it forward or backward, it's all Wu Young Wu. Young Wu's unique introduction makes his sister secretly shake her head. Before eating, Young Wu hears they prepare fruit, so she immediately says to help peel the fruit. The fruits she peels have a beautiful, eye-catching round shape. But soon a round bowl of grapes is brought up. Next is the most stressful test. For more than 20 years, Young Wu has only eaten rice rolls. Other dishes to her are not much different. But because she wants to leave a good impression on Jun Ho's family, Young Wu tries to swallow, immediately showing a pained look on her face. The older sister doesn't want to let the girl force herself like that. Jun Ho tells her not force herself. However, she not only swallows the food, but also acts as if she does enjoy it, and gives compliment to Jun Ho's sister. While Young Wu goes to the bathroom, his sister advises Jun Ho to break up with her, because his parents won't let him be with one having mental problems. Young Wu behind the door hears everything, and for a moment she doesn't know what to do. At the court, the trial has just begun when lawyer Young can't bear his pain anymore. He falls to the ground in pain. It turns out he has been diagnosed with stage 3 stomach cancer. The chance of living 5 more years is not even 40%. Because Young Wu is autistic, she does not have emotional awareness like normal people. From her perspective, Lawyer Young is told the darkest words of his life. She directly counts down his time in front of him. Lawyer Young's whole body feels bad, and his appetite for food is gone. Young Wu suddenly remembers that Lawyer Young always wants to eat happy noodles, but unfortunately that restaurant is closed. Now time is running out. In order to let Lawyer Young pass away peacefully, they split up and go find the noodle shop owner. Young Wu goes to the only famous noodle shop nearby to ask. The owner said that their happy noodle shop has always imitated them. But can't make the same delicious taste as them, so he has to close the shop. But as Jun Ho's observation, the chef behaved strangely. So that night he finds that chef to ask. It turned out that this chef was once a disciple of the owner of the happy noodle shop. At first, Lucky Noodle Shop offered a high price to hire him here. The purpose was to compete with Happy Noodle Shop and even change the name of the shop to Lucky Noodle Shop. After getting fewer customers, the other side can only close the shop. Young Wu suddenly remembers the mailbox filled with letters in front of the shop, and letters are all sent from a nursing home. The shop owner brings his mother with Alzheimer to live here. But he only comes to visit every one to two months. Unfortunately he visited yesterday. In a short time, he won't come again, and the clues is cut off once again. Lawyer Young asks where Young Wu is, telling her to concentrate on the case. Young Wu can only tell white lies. We absolutely won't go looking for the happy noodle shop owner, it seems it's no use in lying. At the court, the abbot says that at first they strongly opposed the repair of the national highway, because it would destroy the peace of the temple. More importantly, the construction process through the mountains causes many deaths. 
Countless trees are cut down, but then nothing can be changed. Setting up toll booths also makes people no longer want to go to the temple. Although Young Wu is also skeptical about the location of these toll booths, they are all within the allowed range. Lawyer Young's former wife knows about his cancer and also immediately comes to visit. Young Wu innocently walked in. No matter from which angle, this case is inconclusive. She talks non-stop, Lawyer Young's former wife asks who she is. I am Lawyer Young Wu. Dragonfly, Puppy Wu Young Wu. Listening to this introduction, she doesn't know what to say. Young Wu and Lawyer Young discuss this case intensely. This causes his wife to fail again to his work. After the two finish discussing, she couldn't help but feel that the most important in his heart is still work. Maybe only work can make him feel happy and then she leaves. Young Wu thinks about her relationship with Jun Ho so she calls her dad. If I take Jun Ho home, what will you plan to do? All parents in the world hope their children will meet the right person. From then on, living a happy life, Young Wu gets the answer she wants. Jun Ho can really take care of her like her father and can also help her feel happy. However, thinking back, she begins to doubt herself. She doesn't know if she can make Jun Ho happy or not. Will she ever make him feel lonely? Young Wu doubts herself so she chooses to step back. She thinks that because of her problem, she will affect Jun Ho's future. No matter how much she suffers, she doesn't know what this feeling is called. Young Wu proposes to break up, Jun Ho seems to be too stunned and stands still without any preparation. He doesn't know that she overheard conversation between his sister and him. Despite Jun Ho's questioning, Young Wu remains silent. He thinks that because she doesn't see the dolphins appear, she is so sad. He then advises Young Wu that dolphins may not appear, but they live in the sea. What you see may not be the truth. Unexpectedly, this statement brings inspiration to Young Wu. That's right, I was blinded by the events in front of me, so I have to ignore the nature of the events. Young Wu begins to talk non-stop, correcting the reasoning behind the case, completely immersing herself in the case. A second ago, they were saying goodbye, but now the conversation changes to analyzing the case, completely ignoring Jun Ho heartbroken by her side. When Jun Ho reminds her, Young Wu is still mumbling to herself and talking non-stop. After finding a breakthrough in the lawsuit, she is so happy that she leaves right away. At this moment, she has already broken his psychological defense. Though Young Wu has autism, he is a normal person. A second ago she wanted to break up, right then she ignores him and keeps analyze the case. Finally, she leaves directly. Who can stand it? Jun Ho finds himself like a clown, getting terribly hurt. But even so, thousands of words Young Wu wants to say are contained in one sentence. I apologize very much. And then she quietly leaves to Jun Ho's shock. During the trial Young Wu finds a key point to speak up. Although the road cuts through the landscape, repairing the road is to serve public resources for the people. Passersby just pass by, not to visit. So this is only about the act of using public resources. The case finally ends successfully. When retouring, to avoid embarrassment, Young Wu cannot sit in the same car with Jun Ho. Lawyer Young decides to visit the temple again and discovers that the toll booth is closed. The abbot enthusiastically welcomes them. Then the ultimate purpose of charging fees is to protect animals and plants. If the court decides to close, they will not have any complaints. Then, the abbot invites them to the canteen for dinner. In the kitchen, they see the happy noodle shop owner whom they have been looking for for so long. Fulfill the wish of Lawyer Young who doesn't have much longer to live. Making Young Wu feel extremely warm. Now, Ms. Sumi is also running for election of the Minister of Justice. Director Han proactively contacts the reporter. She plans that on the election day, she will expose the fact that Young Wu is Sumi's illegitimate child. The day of Lawyer Young's surgery has also come. Young Wu quickly rushes to visit him. She says she wants to come see him a bit. If you die due to failed surgery, I won't be able to see you again. These words surprise his mother. Everyone all knows his survival rate is really high. But emphasize to the patient and their relatives right before surgery. The mental damage is truly fatal and only Young Wu can do it. Before he is pushed into the operating room, she doesn't forget to encourage him to come out alive. The boss helplessly thanks her and then signals to shut up. But she still keeps encouraging him with all her might. You must definitely come out alive. When Lawyer Young is hospitalized, all his work is taken over by Jang Sung Joon. Unexpectedly, a large customer comes to them. Korean largest online shopping system is attacked by hackers. Because the employee accidentally clicks on a browser containing viruses, revealing user information. The supervisory agency gives them a sky-high fine of 3 billion won. Based on previous similar cases, Lawyer Jang thinks that letting users' private information be exposed would result in a fine of 100 million won. Maybe the supervisory agency sees people across the country are using Rayon's app and wants to make money from them. This case is like money falling from the sky. Lawyer Jang takes this opportunity to crazily praise Rayon's CEO. 
But Young Wu's illness takes effect, she slaps people sitting here with her words. According to the data, only 80% of the country's population uses Rayon's app, so saying the whole country uses it is an overstatement. The atmosphere suddenly becomes awkward. Through research, Young Wu finds the legal basis for the supervisory agency to issue that sky-high fine. Rayon is different from previous similar cases in that not only do they have too many users, but related financial transaction information of customers still exists. Commercial transactions such as procedure fees and withdrawals are therefore raised up level and are based on service consumption. She cites many relevant laws, making Lawyer Jang finally know what it's like to be dominated by her. But Lawyer Jang behaves completely differently to Lawyer Yong. He does not accept subordinates telling him what to do, and even cannot accept subordinates refuting his decisions. He loudly tells Young Wu, no matter what he says, she just need to follow it. She then goes find Lawyer Young. He listens to Young Wu and thinks of a way to help her. If she has disagreements, discuss them with colleagues. At the court, Lawyer Jang is calmly narrating the event, but unexpectedly he is caught out very quickly. The judge is also a person with OCD, so he immediately corrects his statement. He said Rayon's users make up 80% of the nation's population. The legal evidence that the supervisory agency gives is exactly the same as what Young Wu says. More importantly, Rayon's side hasn't applied technology to protect user account information. Lawyer Jang is completely defeated and has to pay the price for his subjectivity. The loss advantage of the first trial has had a devastating effect. All users nationwide have unanimously sued not handle it properly, they will have to pay a huge compensation of up to 3 billion won. At that time, the lawyer they have to confront is the Taysan law firm. And while things are at a standstill, Young Wu's OCD continues to take effect. Seeing that lawyer Jang's pronunciation is not correct. She interrupts his conversation. She corrects his pronunciation. Lawyer Jang asks what she says, he doesn't seem to understand. She goes the details of how to pronounce these two words. Completely ignoring Su Yun's warnings. Lawyer Jang angrily scolds her and tells her not to show up or interrupt him anymore. Young Wu overthrows Lawyer Yang's statement and finds a new breakthrough point in the case. Due to his hurt pride, he immediately kicks her out of the team. Lawyer Jang, a person with extremely high self-esteem, is constantly defeated by Yang's OCD. This leaves him without any dignity, and the case continues to fall into a deadlock. Hanbana's side is also exposed to public opinion. The director orders that this time he must win the case. So Lawyer Jang thinks of a new way, planning to rely on his classmates' relationships to bribe the judge. But he doesn't expect that the judge would so honest. His bribery is like playing with a tiger. On the trial day, Lawyer Jang does not dare to stand in front of the judge. He has no choice but to appoint Su Yun as his representative. For this hacker's ability, they believe that even if Rayon applies security technology, he will still easily hack. The person who takes the responsibility is the hacker. But the supervisory agency points out the latest implemented bill as a fatal hit. As long as the security technology isn't set up, when information is leaked, the company will be responsible. Every line of this new law appears in Young Wu's mind. The statement is extremely strong, they have almost no chance of winning this case. Rayon's CEO cannot accept this cruel truth, taking out a pill and swallowing it right in front of the court. Just a few seconds later, he falls to the ground with white foam in his mouth. Then reporters surround the hospital. Coward Jang abandons his co-workers and flees, after the three are lucky enough to escape. While discussing about the case, a sentence from Su Yun evokes a new hunch for Young Wu. The time hackers attacks Rayon coincides with the date the new bill takes effect. But the time he sent the document containing the virus was one day before. So the new bill cannot be applied to this case and they have a certain space to object. Unexpectedly, Lawyer Jang gets angry again and keeps scolding. Being taught by a new lawyer made him lose his pride, he immediately kicks her out of the team. Su Yun is about help Young Wu when she is dragged out by Min Wu. Not everyone is as tolerant as Lawyer Young. If you want to work here peacefully, you must know the acceptance of your superiors. Su Yun immediately contradicts him. She just talks for her colleague for something she thinks is right. Can you not calculate for self-interest and bravely stand up like a fool for once? He asks why he should do that. Su Yun looks straight at him and says that because she likes that type of man. At the final trial, Lawyer Yang goes out without seeing the date. So when he speaks, he is seriously corrected by the judge. Just like Young Wu once reminded him. The difference this time is that he is so obedient, and his opponent flashes a victorious smile. Seeing the case is about to lose, Su Yun stands up and states Young Wu's argument. This new opinion attracts the attention of the judge, but, Su Yun's arbitrary statement makes Lawyer Jang angry. The supervisory agency uses Lawyer Jang's own arguments to refute Su Yun. During the critical moment, Min Wu stands up and perfectly compliments Su Yun's argument, helping them win the case. Young Wu returns home alone and sees Jun Ho waiting for her for a long time. His sister's words causes a twinge in her heart. 
She's not sure if she can bring him happiness. She sadly explains to him. I always put myself at the center of my own world, so I often make those around me feel lonely. She doesn't even realize the loneliness of her beside person. She doesn't even know how to avoid that from happening. Even though I really like you, Jun Ho, I don't have any way to be sure that I won't make him feel lonely. Young Wu's honest explanation makes Juno feel both pity and sadness but also not knowing what to say. At the same time, a plot involving Young Wu is about to be uncovered. Initially to get her into Hanbara, her father agrees to let the director use her identity once to attack Sumi. Unexpectedly, the incident turns into revealing her identity as her illegitimate child online. The mysterious hacker is actually a young teenager who is Sumi's son. The half-blood siblings meet together. The younger brother meets Young Wu for the first time, but it is not fun to talk when he comes here to confess. I am the hacker they are looking for. The real culprit behind it turns out to be Rayon's director Kim. Because he had a disagreement with the CEO, he deceived Sang Hyun to steal user information. Unexpectedly, they completely lost control then. Director Kim and Director Bae are co-directors of the group. But now that Director Bae has fallen into a coma, Director Kim has successfully won everyone's trust. When Sang Hyun has user information in his hands, his conscience arises so he encrypts all the information. Even when Director Kim repeatedly asks him to release it, he absolutely refuses. Now things are getting more and more serious, Rayon Group is not only on the brink of bankruptcy, and Director Bay harms himself to prove his innocence. The feeling of guilt makes him unable to bear it any longer. But when he tells his mother everything and says he wants to confess, his mother stops him because now is an important time for her election. It is absolutely impossible for this scandal to spread widely. However, Sang Hyun discovers Young Wu's existence on his mother's computer. He does not expect his kind and honest mother. When faced with a problem that affects her interests would act like a villain on TV. Trying to cover up the truth of the crime, Sang Hyun hands over the video of himself confessing to Young Wu. Right now the only person he trusts is this strange sister. When she encounters trouble, she will go find lawyer Young to talk. Director Kim is their customer. If the video is published, it will not only affect the interests of the client, but also damage the reputation of their law firm. Now should I choose justice or be a law-abiding machine? Lawyer Young tells her that everyone's rules are different. And tells her to think carefully about what kind of lawyer she wants to become. In his eyes, Wu Young Wu is not an ordinary lawyer like many others. Director Han takes the next lawsuit very seriously, so she herself participates in the discussion. Their previous victory helps them take the initiative in the class action lawsuit. After that, Lawyer Jang stands up and shamelessly says, to take all of Young Wu's merits for himself. At night, Sumi sends Young Wu an invitation to work at Taysen's US branch. She will also help her make appointments with the best specialists to give her psychological advice. Her insecure appearance makes Juno's words of concern impossible to express. He has to wait for another opportunity. Her father also says that Director Han would publicly reveal her identity to attack Sumi. But no matter what, Young Wu will still show her brother's video. Just by showing it in court, Sumi wouldn't be able to stop the boy from confessing. But she also encounters mixed opinions. Lawyer Jang and Min Wu think that betrayal of their customers will bring a bad reputation to their law firm. Young Wu is on side of equity. Director Han believes that this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Because when this is revealed, Sumi's election campaign will definitely fail. But the company's reputation is also a matter of concern. At that moment, Young Wu think of a way, she is abandoned by her mother for more than 20 years. This will be the first time she speaks out her request to her mother, to help her younger brother confess and reduce the punishment. Young Wu will take her brother's confession video to expose Director Kim's crimes. Although the law firm cannot cause conflicts of interest for clients, Director Kim is only the client's representative. Customer is truly the subject of the company, so there is no conflict between the two sides. Furthermore, her younger brother encrypts the information taken from users. So personal information is not exposed. This could help her brother confess and reduce his punishment. While also giving them a chance to win this case. Director Han also cancels the plan to attack Sumi by revealing Young Wu's identity. On the trial day, the video is just released, Director Kim immediately protests. After that, lawyer Min Wu presents a dismissal letter for the company representative. After recovering, Director Bei immediately holds a shareholder meeting. To cut off Director Kim's way out. But the other side's lawyer objects to the right to cross-examine the witness. Besides, the boy is just a middle school student, the authenticity of the video has not yet been confirmed. Sumi, in order to stop them, forced to take her younger brother on a plane and leave here. Director Han has planned in advance and prepares to mobilize all media to expose this matter. Although it takes more time, the results will be much better. Young Wu protests that if the truth is exposed to the media, her younger brother would not be able to confess and reduce his sentence. Previous efforts seem to have gone down the drain. She decides to go see Sumi herself and convince her to let her brother come to court to testify. 
Lawyer Jang doesn't understand and advises her that not everyone Sumi would meet. To his surprise, Director Han agrees, Jun Ho takes the initiative to take her away. Her trying to be brave to face the problem also arouses his courage. Although Young Wu's uniqueness sometimes makes him feel lonely, but the fluttering of his heart towards her is not fake either. Then the misunderstanding between them two is finally resolved. Both bravely face this feeling, from the moment she learns that Young Wu is her daughter. This is the first time they talk privately. Seeing her strange and stupid actions, it is impossible to imagine how much suffering her daughter has gone through these years. How many failures a mother like her has had. While in her younger brother's eyes, she is a kind and honest mother. Young Wu does not want to lose a child's trust for her own sake. Because of his kind mother, otherwise he would be very heartbroken. And no matter how long it takes, that wound will never heal. She tells her mother that she is not a good mother to her. But could she at least become a good mother in Sang Hyun's eyes? Young Wu doesn't know if she would succeed or not. But she has gathered all the injustice and suffering for more than 20 years into today's tears. Finally, her younger brother appears at the trial. His confession earns Director Bei's forgiveness. Young Wu also completes the interrogation of her younger brother herself. Sumi voluntarily withdraws from her candidate position to focus on taking care of her child. The case receives a big victory, Director Kim is arrested. The lost data is preserved intact and restored, nothing bad happened. And because her younger brother in juvenile voluntarily confesses, is sent to a re-education camp one month. Lawyer Yong, after his illness improves, has reconciled with his former wife. At the end of the story, the strange lawyer Young Wu finds her happiness. Having gone through many difficulties, she finally has the most beautiful days of her life with Jun Ho. Okay, this is the end of the movie. Please take 3 seconds to subscribe to the channel to support us. Thank you for watching our channel. See you in the next movie.